So, what's up guys, and thanks for joining for another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, and you know it, Skyrunner. So right, today we're going to final against Anima. It's been some time since we battled, I mean, she is just so great, so charming really. And I'm looking forward to battle her since I got, like I said, so extremely busy at work. I haven't got around to battle a lot there, so actually, yesterday I battled at least, I think I had around 10 battles yesterday. Um, this team that I'm having is working great, but going into this battle, I just realized something that I haven't figured out against the other players that I went against. This team is like super weak to ice. Like the Golurk, Sceptile, Sandslash, and Noctowl is extremely weak to ice. And that is terrifying. Knowing that both the Frogadier and Sneasel is in there. Definitely gonna give him a run for my money. And also, I am very weak to like the two the walls that I got that is um Golurk and uh, Mesprit, they can't deal with dark dark moves. And seeing that both Slan Slash and um Pangoro has uh, dark attack moves, I know I can't bring them there. And also, we have the same type of defensive matchup, both being Sand Slash and uh, Gramble. So I know when they go against one another that's gonna be a stalemate. Uh, but I didn't mind it. I actually knew I can probably win that one if I'm lucky. And other than that, I mean, my winning condition for this game is, you know, keeping Sceptile healthy. Sceptile can easily take out the Frogadier, Pangoro, Gramble, and Sand Slash with Leap Storm. Uh, I can deal with Dragology with Dragon Breath. So Sceptile is my winning condition. Need to preserve this poke <laughs> as well as I can. Mesprit and Noxowl is, you know, meh. But other than that, guys, you know what? This is a very interesting battle. It was very, very funny. And very interesting for me to play with, knowing I had this disadvantage. So let's actually get to it. So in the beginning here, I was so sure she was gonna bring the Sneasel. So I just went with Golurk, knowing I can wall a fake out. So I know she's going to switch out here. I don't think she will actually try to go for a knockoff or anything like that. So I'm actually gonna switch out here, go into my Gramble, in case she decides to stay in. But I actually decided to switch out to his Nasher, her Gramble. And well... This is actually a perfect time for me, you know, I get in, since I am slower, I'm getting the Intimidate off. So I actually predict her to switch to, to, a, to her Sand Slash here. Uh, she actually decides to stay in while I'm going to my Elissa, my Sceptile, and... Uh, oh no. The worst part is, that wasn't like a bad idea at all, because I could get her on Sand Slash and go into Leaf Storm, really forcing her to outplay her, but no. She went for the safe move, and I'm an idiot, so this is like a huge, huge disadvantage. But seeing that we have almost 8 minutes left means that this is actually far from over, this battle was much longer than that. So she will decide to withdraw the Nasha, not a bad move, going to Blunt to tank the Leaf Storm. Did I miss? God damn it. Well, no matter actually, I decided to switch out there because I don't really want to stay into that. And she has to bring the Pangoro, uh, expecting me to go into Optimus Prime here. Really nice move there. So I'm forced to go into my Nasher, you know, getting the Intimidate off to get a heal bell so my Sceptral can be at least healthy. But she got Poison Jab, predicted me, and that was well over half, which means I can't use heal bell here. Well, that did a trick. So, judging on that amount of damage, I do expect this thing to be actually choice banded. So I actually decided to go with my Frederick, my Sand Slash just to actually wall the poison jab and I know she's gonna switch out so I can easily hear her going for a knockoff so judging on that damage could it might as well have been scarfed no matter actually so I went for the knockoff here and well she brings Defender which is her own sand slash there and I get a crit and look at that that is nothing so this is pretty much a stalemate here because these guys wall each other very well and she just set up a rock stair I actually thought she might as well do that so I just went for an earthquake Getting another crit. And you know, I don't mind hacks, but I know when it happens to him <laughs> to himself that it's going to, you know, um, balance itself out. So I am pretty sure that um, these type of crits that I get will not put me in a better position. So I actually thought you might as well try to switch out this. I just went for knockoff, and I'm glad I did it on the frog there, but I don't kill it. So I actually decided to switch out here because, well, I can't really do anything here. Um, I don't want to take an Ice Beam or a Scold. So I went to my Mesprit, my special defensive ball, tanking that Ice Beam rather well there. But I did not expect the U-turn as it had as a physical move. And well, 
it balanced itself out. So yeah, so now my special defensive wall is you know, neutered, it's nerfed, it's practically dead. I mean, I went for U-turn because I thought I was in a much better position when I decided to switch it out. This, that was obviously not the case, and uh, that really sucks. And uh, being that um, she switched out to uh, the Pangoro, my, I just wanted to get some simulate off and just, just switch out right away to Mesprit because it's practically a dead. So at least I can see what kind of move she's going for. And this is basically for me just a recovering process because the Frogadier is at the moment uh, it's fully capable of sweeping my whole team. So I decided to go for Frederick here and uh, that was actually kind of a bad play thinking about it because she was actually locked into parting shot. I could have easily pulled off a uh, heal build right there which would have been much better for me. I went for stealth rocks here and I just want those rocks up because Sneasel is still a threat for me. So now I'm actually going to bring in Optimus Prime here to try and to wall, by definition, uh, the Ice Beam. And I think it does it fairly well. I give it that. But, I mean, I can't do this for too much longer. Because that is <laughs> that is actually too much damage for me. So she will decide to switch out. I just went for Green Punch in case he decided to try to finish me off. So at least he can recover some damage there. So bring the Nosher there. Nosher easily walling me now with the Intimidate going. And I see no reason to stay in, even though I can actually face it off against a blue later off and go for an earthquake. I do want this guy to actually have full attack while trying to do so. So I, I am effective. I'm, I am forced to switch out there, and I'm going to force myself to switch into my sand slash here. Being that her sand slash is such a low amount of HP, I can just try to at least get a rapid spin off. I'm going to try to face her. Uh, sadly, she get the attack fell on me, and you know. You just have to deal with it. I mean, that is those 10% and it, it's a part of the game. It doesn't matter too much though, because Gramble is such a defensive poke anyway. And uh, yeah, basically this is what happened. I go into Rapid Spin now. She will actually think that I'm going for another Earthquake. And she is going somewhat to sack her frog there. But as, since I went for Rapid Spin, this thing still lives. Like, <laughs> And it's like I said, it's such a huge threat. Because I am in full desire of actually this thing out because it outspeeds everything on my team so i need to pull off a heal bell and i can't really do that against the frog there i have to have a better matchup than this so she actually decided to go for the u-turn there which will do nothing to my hector there this is my special attack in hector and not the defogging one and look at this hyper voice it actually did fair damage here that is almost one third so yeah i love it so I really didn't want to stay into this, like I didn't want to see that pain go in. Plus Optimus can actually wall this one rod nicely. And she actually decided to go for a scold and look at this. This is beautiful. I actually took that like a champ. So this is what Optimus Prime is all about. It doesn't get to get too much showcase here sadly. She'll decide to sack off her fender. So that means that I win the stealth rock war. Yes! Finally, I want something. So, and yeah, I got, I got, I got a crit there. Awesome. So anyway, here's the chicken. And well, being that I can't really do anything with it because Golurk is still in the range of where an ice shot from a Sneasel will take it out. So I actually decide to, you know what? Let's, let's actually take it <laughs> or kill it. So I'm going to snap here for the same reason. I really need to pull off a heal bell there, and this is like my best shot at it. I won't get a better opportunity now that the rocks are gone, and I survive with a slither of health. So the bells, the huge bells of freedom is calling for end all hacks and let's win this battle. So now my Lissa is not longer paralyzed and that is, that is amazing. That means that Alyssa can come in and you hear that? That is wonderful music. So finally this frog, this eventual frog is dead. And I know she's gonna go for a fake out here, or an eye shot. And that combination is not enough to take me out. And I had it in mind, so I'm just gonna go for another Dragon Breath here. I know that Gramble is in her team. And this is likely when she's found out that I inspect, obviously. So, yeah. There's not much I can do here, really. And just have to accept the situation as it is. And I'm just gonna bring Hexter here. I take that paralyzation, because it's not like Gramble can do any significant damage on me. And that's actually really fine. So the paralyzation is going, and I'm just going to try to get our last Hyper Voice off here. And Hyper Voice will easily do, roughly at least. I think it could kill, but I will not find out because she got a crit there. And that's the part of the game.
I don't think cover was will kill though, it's such a good HP, so I'm, I'm just rambling. Obviously 50% the top maybe. So I'm just going to finish the game off, I mean, I only have Sceptile left, and being that the matchup for me has been... So right, thank you everybody for watching. Um, this was a really tough battle for me. Being that Adam I had that superior matchup in the beginning, and I mispredicted with my Sceptile, really put me in a position that I'm not, I'm not too comfortable in it, that is trying to recover from something I just can't stop. And being that I couldn't really switch around too much because she always had a superior matchup, being that I have four posts that was weak to ice, I couldn't walk around it. I I don't know, I felt so powerless in this battle, and but I liked it because it was actually forcing me to play in a way that I never usually play at. And I yeah, I felt as it was a really really good training ground really. I feel that I learned something from this battle and I want to be in a disposition again sometime. And uh, being my stats, I think it actually can be. So yeah, other than that, guys, you know, make sure to check out Anima or Elora. She she is a great and very charming person, really. And you know, she makes great content, and she's actually passing 500 subs now. So make sure to check it out. You've probably already done it. I mean, you've been following me for ages, and you know her since then. So yeah, make sure to check her out. And hopefully, she will join. Or she will upload her side of the battle. I'm very interested to in see what her thought process was. Because I must say, she must have felt really like comfortable and like at peace during this battle, considering the matchup that she got. But other than that, guys, thank you as always for watching. And don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. No, but really, thank you guys, as I said, for watching. And have a good day. Alright, guys? Bye.